Hi, today we are going to learn context free grammar simplification. Before learning simplification of context free grammar, some points regarding context free grammar are context free grammar is used to define a structure of programming languages. And the structure of programming languages is verified by software and parser. What are the softwares like Turbo C++ that verify the C++ languages? Similarly, there is a parser. Parser is implemented by context-free grammar. It is, its efficiency is also depends upon context-free grammar. We have learned derivation tree that is also known as parse tree. So we generate parser to recognize the languages. To improve the efficiency of parser, we perform simplification, normalization, and removal of ambiguity. The first term, simplification of context-free grammar. As we have done minimization in finite automata, similarly, we are going to reduce the context-free grammar to improve the efficiency of parser. So for the re reducing the context-free grammar, we eliminate useless symbols, unit productions, and null production. So in further, we will discuss useless symbols, unit production, and null production removal. The first term is useless symbols. What are the useless symbols in a particular grammar? A variable which is not involved in derivation of any string. For example, S derives A, A derives small b, and B derives A. This is a context-free grammar. And variables are S, capital S, capital A, capital B, and terminals are small a and small b. And the string generated from this grammar would be combination of small a and small b. Here we can see we can't reach from S to B. S drives A, A, and A drives small b. But we can't reach B to A. So, so B can't be involved in the string generation. That's why this is useless symbols for generation of a string. Next, a variable that can't be reached from a start symbol of a grammar that is useless symbol as we have seen. If a variable is reachable from a start symbol but does not derive any terminal, this is important. These two points are important for identifying useless symbols. So does not derive any terminal, also useless symbol. So these useless symbols should be removed to improve the efficiency of context-free grammar. Next term is unit production. So what is unit production in context-free grammar? If there is A derives B, where A and B both are variables, then that is known as unit production. So we have to remove unit production. For example, this is the grammar context-free grammar, S drive small a capital A, A drives B, and B drives B. Here we can see A and B both are variables, and A drives B in this format, it exists, so this is unit production. So we have to remove this unit production. There are some method for removing this unit production. We will learn further, and after the removal, we will find S drive A, A drive B, and B drive B also. Next is null production. So what is null production? If a variable drives epsilon, so that is known as null production. So here we can see S drive capital A B, A drives small a and epsilon, and B drives small b and epsilon. So we can see A drives epsilon, B drives epsilon are null production because they derive null values. So after this null production removal, we can get S drive A, B, small a, B, and A drives A, B drives B. So we will see how we can do null production and unit production removal. The process of context-free grammar, removal of null production, unit production, and useless would be in this order. First null production removal, then unit, then useless symbols removal. Now we are going to see how we can remove null production. There are simple tricks, but 
but you have to concentrate yourself if there is a variable if there is a grammar g that contains variable terminal production and start symbol after epsilon production removal after null production removal we get a new grammar g dash that also contain v t but new production will be p dash and s so if lg contains epsilon this grammar language contain epsilon then there is another language lg dash we will find which does not contain epsilon for that the method is find a variable that derives epsilon and make new set of p dash the how we you will make set of p dash that is important for example there is a a there is a s derive ab and a derives a or epsilon and b derives b or epsilon so here we can see a derives epsilon b derives epsilon a and b are null production variables so what we have we have to do s derive ab both are null production variables so we have to check how many combination of ab can occur so it can be ab or a or b in the next line we will write s derive ab or s derive a or s derive b so if there is this type of where production as derive a b where a and b both are null production so we make the combinations and we write in this way as derive a b as derive a and as derive b and a derives a and b derives b so this is the solution now if there is a variable derivation like second example a derives b c and alpha alpha is a terminal so what we have to do and b c both are both derived null so what we have to do a derives b c so b c combinations are b c b or c so we can directly write a derived b c a derived b a derived c now alpha is associated with this production so write alpha with each one and in the last write a derives alpha so it will be a a new grammar g dash and new production rule p dash which does not contain epsilon next there is a unit production rule in the unit production rule if a derives b there is a single variable in left side and single variable in right side so how we can remove it and this rule will be applied after the null production removal so if trick trick is important how we can see that if s derive a or b c and a derive b or c a and b derive s capital s or ab so how can we get unit production removal here we can see s derive a if we write separately each one we see S derive A is unit production. A derive B is also unit production, and B derive S is also unit production. Okay, so what we have to do? We have to remove this unit production, and how the removal will be performed? S derive A, and A derives terminal C A. So S derive C A. S derive C A. Then A derive B and B is unit terminal production is A B. So S also derive A B. 
and BC is already derivable by S. Similarly, with S, S drag B and terminal CA. So we have to remove this one. So we can see L A drive CA and A drive B and B drive a ter terminal AB. So A drive A directly drive AB. A drive S, A drive B and B drive S. So A drive S and S drive a terminal BC. So we can write BC and in the last C A is already drivable by A. B, B drive S and S drive terminal BC. So we can write BC and S drive A, A is drive C A. So we can write C A and B drives A B in all way. So this is unit production removal. There was an example in the first question. This is very easy example for uh, unit production. So here we see S drive A A, A drives B and B drives B. What we have to do S drive A A and we have to remove this unit production. For that we have to A drive B and A drives terminal B. How? A drives B and B drives B so A directly drives B. So we write A A, A drives B and B drives small b. So this is unit production removal next grammar G drives. And most important for this simplification of context-free grammar is if there is a new grammar G dash, we got new grammar G dash, but the language generated from both the grammar should be equivalent. This is the important. There is one question. Here we have to remove null production and unit production and useless symbols. For that, we can see the null production is A drive lambda. This is lambda sometimes is equal to epsilon is equal to lambda. So in this question, after null production removal, removal, A drives lambda, here we only one variable A drives lambda so for removing of this, we write S drive A A, where A drives A A A, and A drives lambda, so that's why it is drive A A. If we replace this in, and next is A B B as it is, A drives A A, and B drives small b, capital B, B, B and capital C. In the next step we have to make unit production removal. We check what are the unit production are there. In the unit production there is one C drives B. That is unit production and we have to remove it. For that we have to check what C drives B and B drives B B and B B C. So up to this point everything would be same. For C we write B capital C C drives B and B drives B B and this is B B C. One extra will be added and remaining as drive A A and A drives and B drives And now we have to find useless symbols that cannot be accessed by S or that 
that don't do not generate any terminal this capital c are variables capital b a are variables small a and small b are terminals here we can see capital c does not derive any terminal and capital b does not derive any terminal it derives a terminal along with some variables so these two are useless symbols so final simplification answer would be s drive a a a and a drives a a a and small a and all the b variables will be removed this is simplification of context free graph thank you